Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by the channel. I know it's been quite a long time since I've posted any new videos, but I've been quite busy over the last six months. And uh, but I have a little more free time now, so I think I'm going to start making some new content. And the first thing I want to show you is the enclosure that I made for the Fox Alien Riser Laser Engraver. Now this enclosure, the approximate size is about 28 inches wide, 33 inches deep, and about 18 inches high. And as you can see here, I uh, put on these uh, acrylic, orange acrylic safety panels. I bought these from JTEC Photonics. They're about 12 inches high, 24 inches wide, and about an eighth inch thick. You can see I put one on the front, one on the top, and then the third one I cut lengthwise and I made a little window on each side. So that lets in a lot of, a lot of the light from the LED lights I have here on the ceiling. So that way, uh, I don't need to uh, put any lights inside the enclosure and uh, I can see what's going on in there without you know having just a real dark space or just a one tiny little window to look through. So again I bought these from JTEC Photonics. I think I bought them over the Black Friday holiday back in November and they were about $25 a piece at that time. I think right now they may be closer to $40 or $50 a piece but um, so I'm not sure, but it's definitely something to look into. I know you can probably get them on Amazon or somewhere else, but uh, that's where I bought them at the time since they were on sale. Now, as you can see here for the lid, I was initially going to go with a double hinge lid here, the hinge here, and then one hinge up here by the keyboard. But um, after I started using it, I didn't like the, the way that the hinge or that these panels, this panel flipped back. So I thought it was a little flimsy. So I just added these corner blocks up at the top to keep it fixed into position at a 90 degree angle. So I think it works out pretty well. And then I just put these little triangular wood blocks there behind the lid just to keep it from going back too far. So as you can kind of see here, I also, I don't know if you can hear it, the fans there. There's a fan in the back which I have connected to this power strip. I have one one in the back there. It's a four inch um, fan, and then the uh, the um, tube, the exhaust tube, goes underneath the workbench, and then it comes out over here by the window. And there's a second fan over there, which I just have it uh, cut a hole through a piece of uh, one inch foam board insulation, and uh, that works pretty well with the two fans. Initially, I only had one fan, but it wasn't quite uh, strong enough to push it the 8 or 10 feet out the window. So just adding the second fan worked out pretty well. So, uh, I think for the enclosure itself, and that's probably uh, most of what I can tell you. Other than uh, the inside here with the Fox Alien riser by itself here, um, I purchased these uh, riser feet, I guess you could say, that raises up. The, uh, the machine so you could put a rotary attachment on there or what or you know thicker pieces that you want to engrave and I also bought the honeycomb bed which I have permanently mounted onto these wood blocks which are permanently mounted onto the base of the enclosure so that way um, you know whenever I'm cutting through something that gives me plenty of clearance on the bottom here where I'm not burning the bottom of the box so I usually keep an eye on that and it works pretty well. It's raised up about two inches, so you know, it works pretty good. And I don't know if you can see, but I also have the air assist nozzle there from Laser Wizards, I believe. And I also bought the air pump from Fox Alien, which is over there. So, and uh, I think that should about take care of it, mostly for the machine. But if you're wondering what, uh, what I have here on the on the honeycomb bed, I made this template for cutting coasters and uh, like uh, aluminum uh, engraving aluminum business cards or dog tags or pet tags or these other circular little like key keychain tags. And uh, what I did is I I cut some eighth inch Baltic birch plywood and I made some various different shapes and cutouts here. So if I want to do s different size coasters or whatever. I can just put these in here. I can pull out, pull out these um, pieces, and uh, like this here is four and a quarter inches in diameter. 
so I can just put the coaster right in there. I know exactly where it's positioned in light burn. And same with this here. This slate coaster is three and seven eighth inches. So, but if I do want to uh, cut four bigger coasters, I just take out these little rings and I could put four of them in there. Or if I want to do four smaller coasters, I could just put these smaller rings in there. Or if I just want to engrave something that's uh, bigger than these holes, I can just put it, fill all these holes in with the, the pieces I cut out and then everything will lay flat. So as you can see here, I have these here for some pet tags some dog tags here and again the business cards uh, this is a three inch cut out for a little mirror that I cut my channel logo on and again some square coaster holes so I think it works out pretty well now this uh, what this does is it eliminates me from having to do any framing on these individual pieces I can cut four at a time of uh, the court coasters the big round ones or the small ones the late slate ones or I can cut you know, I could cut a cork coaster, or I can engrave a cork coaster, I can engrave a keychain tag, a dog tag, a business card, all on the same project, and I know exactly where everything's going to be. I don't have to worry about framing or anything moving or shifting around. And as you can see here, I do have the piece just kind of temporarily secured in place with the tape, the painter's tape, but I cut this plywood to fit inside the extrusion the whole way around the honeycomb bed and uh, so that holds it in place pretty well I know that if I turn the machine off and then I come back you know tomorrow or a couple days later as long as this machine has not been bumped or the gantry hasn't been moved from its current position I know that everything will line up perfectly now sometimes I do test it I might put a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper in one of the holes and just do a quick test burn to make sure it is still centered but like I said 99% of the time it is still perfectly centered so uh, as long as I don't bump this at all or move it I know it's going to be perfect each time so I think for the most part that should take care of that now I can kind of show you how I did it in light burn or just my light burn setup <coughs> so I have this here I'm not sure how well you can see that or how well it's focused but as you can see here I have all my template space set up and all these shaped shapes are locked into position in light burn so this where I have the mouse here this overall square shape is the size of the plywood is the overall size of the plywood and then I have these smaller shapes locked into position also so if I want to do a coaster say I want to do one square and one round so I can just move this over kind of let it snap into center position you know so if I want to do a three inch coaster I can resize this to three inches and I know it's going to be perfectly center or if I want to resize it up or whatever to do a bigger four inch coaster boom I know it's going to be centered same with the square I can move this in to be in like a three inch square or if I want to resize it up I can snap it into place so I can cut you know so I can cut all different shapes on the same at the same time I can and then if I wanted to cut a dog tag I could put a dog tag in here or a pet tag the little keychain tag whatever or the mirror up in here so and I can you know if I want to move these around you know I can just move them around and then relock them into place so this works out pretty well and I'm happy with it so far I've cut quite a few or engraved quite a few coasters over the last uh, couple months either for Christmas presents or trying to maybe uh, sell a few but it worked out pretty well so again as long as I don't bump the machine or make the uh, um, gantry move at all from the previous time that I've used it to the current time everything is going to work out perfectly as long as I use this starting point right here I know what this starting point is right here on the coordinates are and light burn on the machine so as long as I start my laser from this position everything will be lined up perfectly so um, I think that should about take care of it um, 
don't think I've forgot anything other than maybe just to kind of show you a little bit more of the setup that I have here which um, again I just have a dedicated uh, computer set up here for the in laser engraver so that way I don't have to do uh, multiple ports or anything on my computer desktop computer which is behind me because I do use that for the uh, Prover XL 4030 sitting right there so then I can have a dedicated computer which is right back here this is just a small fanless PC I'm not sure what brand it is but it was about $180 off of Amazon and it works perfectly fine for running light burn and the laser engraver so I don't really use it for anything else although it does have Wi-Fi so I can I can download new designs and whatnot and just kind of use everything instead of trying to transfer transfer um, files from another computer onto this one or USB drives or or the offline controller so it makes it much easier to have everything set up in one space for the laser engraver that's dedicated to the laser so uh, if you have any questions feel free to let me know shoot me an email or a comment um, but again this is my laser engraver setup I'm hoping to do some more projects that I can show you I have a, quite a few things lined up that I want to do and also uh, with the um, this Prover XL here oh, I can kind of show you some of the coasters that I've done already here just in the last few days that works pretty well on the uh, Fox Alien machine so if you have any questions let me know again if you like the video please uh, hit the like and subscribe button if you're not subscribed but other than that um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time